Hi, I'm Luna. I'm gonna read Glass Stanley Stanley's Christmas Adventure by Jeff Brown. Prologue. She was the sort of little girl who liked to be sure of things, so she went all over Stanley City checking up. The elves had done their work at the post office. Male elves had read the letters, making lists of who wanted. Who wanted what? In the great yard shop, the doll room, the toy plants, the game mill, gift elves had filled the orders, taking care as to color and size and styles. In the wrap sheet, the gift lay ready, wrapped now in the gay paper with holly and pin coins, sorted off by country, by city or village, by road or line and or street. The rebels tease her. Don't trust it. Don't don't trust it. A snooping we call this miss. Pooh said the little girl. Well done, elves. Good work. But at home in so Snow City Square, all was not well. Don't slam the door, dear. Said her mother, weeping. Your father's having his nap. Mother, what's wrong? He won't go this year. He says. The mother sobbed. He's had been he's been so crossly cross lately, but I never. Why? Why won't he go? They they've lost faith. They don't care anymore. He says, surely not everyone. I said, think of your favorite letter, the one by your desk. He just growled at me. Pooh said the girl, it's not fair, really. I mean, everything is ready. Why not now, dear? Said the mother. It's been a dreadful day. In the little office at the ha- back of the house, the girl studied the letter her mother had mentioned, framed with others on the wall. I am a regular boy, except that I got flat. The letter said, "From an accident, I was going to ask for a new cloth, but my mother already bought them. She had to because of the flatness. So I'm just writing to say, don't bother me about me." Have a nice day, nice holiday. My father, my father says, be careful driving. There are lots of bad drivers this time of year. The girl thought for a moment, and an idea came to her. Hmm. Well, why not? She said. She looked again at the letter. The lamb, the name lamb chap was printed across the top, and an address. It was signed Stanley, USA. Chapter One, Sarah. It was two nights before Christmas, and all through the house, not the lamp chop was sitting, but something was. Stanley lamp chop sat up in in his bed. Listen, someone said, "Rat." It it was more like "Rat," and his younger brother said, "His younger brother Arthur from his bed in the living room, I think." The brother tiptoed down the stairs. For a moment, all was silence in the dark, darkened. Darkened living room. There came, then came a thump. Ouch! Said the small voice. Drat again. Are you a burglar? Arthur called. Did you hurt yourself? I am not a burglar. Said the voice. Where's the? Oh. Ah. The lights came on. The brothers stared before the fireplace by the Christmas tree. Stood a slender, dark-haired little girl wearing a red jacket and shirt. Boat. Both trimmed with the white fur. I banged it twice. She said, rubbing her knee, coming down the chimney. And just now, we do have a front door, you know, said Stanley. But so does my house. But you know, this time of year, the girl sounded a bit nervous. Actually, I've never done this before. Let's see. Ha ha ha! Safe and greetings. Ha ha ha! Ha ha to you, said Arthur. What's so funny? Bunny said the girl. Oh, ho, ho, ho! I mean, I mean, I'm Sarah Christmas. Who are you, Arthur Lumpchop? Said Arthur. That's my brother Stanley. It is, but he's not flat. He was, but I blew him up. Arthur explained with a bicycle pump. Oh no! I wish he hadn't. Sarah Christmas sank into the chair. Dread! It was all go wrong, going wrong. Perhaps I shouldn't have. Come, but that's how I am. How strong! My mother said she. Excuse me, Stanley. Sabo, where are you from? 
And why did you come? said Doctor Sarah. Told them Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop was reading in the bed, reading in bed. A tap came at the door, and a stylish voice. Hey, can I come in? Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop cared greatly for pro- proper speech. Hey, it's rehearsals, Stanley. She said, "I'm not can, dear. You may come in." Stanley, come in. What's the explanation? Explanation, my boy, of this late call," said Mr. Lumpchop, remembering remembering the surprise he had now. I see he comes late again. He has a genie come to visit, or perhaps the president of U- the United States has called. Mrs. Lumpchop smiled. "You're very amusing, George." After an hour in bed, said Stanley. But we heard a noise and want to see. It was a girl called Sarah Christmas from Snow City. She talks a lot. She says her father says he won't come this year. But Sarah thinks he might change his mind if I ask him to, because I wrote him a letter once that he liked. She wants to me to go to go with her to Snow City, and her father's late. It adds, it adds a North Pole, I think. Then we call this press. I said I have you. I have to ask you first. Quite right, said Mrs. Lumpchop. Mr. Um, Mr. Lumpchop went to the bathroom and drank a glass of water to calm himself. Now then, Sally, he said, returning, you have great cerebral lads. Surely, put your rope, George. Said Mrs. Lambchop. Let's hear for ourselves what the visitor has to say. This is delicious. Sarah Christmas sipped the hot, hot chocolate Mrs. Lambchop had served them all. My mother makes it too, with cinnamon, cinnamon on it, and a little cookie with her glance has fallen on the ma- mantelpiece. What's that pin up there? Christmas stockings. Stanley said the blue one's mine. But the other, the great square thing, is a pillowcase. As her blushed, a stocking wouldn't do. I have very small feet. Pooh! Sarah laughed. You want an extra gift, so Sarah dear, Mrs. Lambchop said. Your father has he truly made up his mind? Do you think? Oh yes, Sarah sighed. But I felt Stanley being glad that really interested him. I mean, I couldn't be sure. But if nobody ever did anything without. You seem a very nice girl, Sarah. Mister Lambchop gave a little laugh. But you have been joking with us, Charlie. I. The telephone rang, and he answered it. Hello, George. The caller said, "This is your neighbor, Frank Smith." I know it's late, but I must congratulate your glad congratulate on you on your Christmas lawn display. The best lawn, said Mister Lambchop. Display. The sleigh and those lifelike reindeer. What ma- makes them move about that like that? Batteries, I suppose. Just a moment, Frank. Mister Lambchop went to the window and looked out. Missus Lambchop beside him. My goodness, she said, one, two, three, four, eight, and such a pretty sleigh. Mister Lambchop returned to the phone. They're lifelike, aren't they? Goodbye. Thanks for. Thank you for calling, Frank. See, I'm a joking kind of person, actually. Sarah Christmas. No, my dear, might work even without the flannels. Do let only go to the North North Pole. The Miss Lambchop at night by himself. Good gracious, Sarah! It's not fair asking Stanley about me. The author, feeling hurt, did always like this. I never. Oh, Pooh! Sarah Christmas smiled. Actually, you can you can. You could all go. It's very big lake. Mister and Missus Lambchop looked at each other, then at Stanley and Arthur, then at each, at each other again. Stanley just might make a difference, George. Missus Lambchop said. And if we can all go, quite right, said Mister Lambchop. Mister Lambchop, Sarah、so、will accompany accompany you you to Snow City. Hooray! Shouted the. Stanley and Arthur and Sarah too. Mrs. Lambchop thought they would. They should until, until Frank Smith had gone to bed. Imagine the gossip.
she sat where he to see our reindeer fly away. Mr. La- Mr. Lanshaw called his office to leave a message on the nighttime answer- answering machine. He would not be in tomorrow, she sat, as he had been calling unexpectedly out of town. There, cried Stanley by the windows, the smith light out. The lamp traps changed quickly from pajamas to warmer clothing and followed Sarah to the sleigh. Chapter 2 The Sleigh Welcome aboard, said Sarah from the driver's seat. The lamp trap sitting on the little bunches that made the big sleigh resemble a roofless bus could scarcely contain their excitement. The night sky shone bright with stars, and from the windows of nearby houses, red and green Christmas lights twinkled over snowy lawns and streets. Before dawn, the eight reindeer, for shining in the moonlight, tossed their untured heads, ready. Ready when you are, Sarah and Mr. Lantrop said. Good, Sarah cleared her throat. Fasten your seatbelt, please. We are about to depart for sh- Snow City. My name is Sarah, I guess you know that. And I'm glad to be to answer any question you may have. D- please do not move about without permission of the playmaster, that's me. At least, at least right now, and obey whatever introduction. Introduction, introduction may please uh, said after oh all right the lunch of Hudson their seat belts and Sarah took up the strings Ready, one, two, three, just numbers, cried Mrs. Lambchop. Why? We know such a lovely ra- range your names. Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Com- Comet, Cupid, Donner, Blitzen. Blitzen. Shouted after, they're co- they're from the poem we know. These those are good names," said Tara. Ready, one through eight. The reindeer pawed the ground, jingling their harness her- bells. Now," said Sarah, the jingling stopped suddenly, and the gray silence fell. Now a silver mist rose, swirling about the sleigh. The turtle lamp chop could see nothing beyond the mist. Not their house were house nor the hut. Ha- Houses of their neighbors, not the twinkle Christmas lights, not the bright stars above. There was the only silver mist everywhere, cool against their cheeks. What is this, Sarah? Mrs. Lambchop called. Arina produced proceeds to Snow City. The rest of came cheerfully through the mist. We have proceeded. We are there. Thank you for watching and please subscribe my channel. Bye.